Hey everyone, I'm Stella and I'm back this week with a new video in which we will be talking vanilla perfumes. So if that sounds like your thing, just keep watching. Starting off first with my most affordable option, this is Reminiscence Vanilla. I think I must have picked up uh, an older bottle because I think now they have a repackaged and they have more sleeker uh, white bottle and that explains why I got it for a very very affordable price. I read some very good reviews online and it got me really excited to try it. This perfume features Osmandus Blossom, we have Jasmine, we have Heliotrope and also we have three different types of vanilla. So we have Tahiti Vanilla, Ugandan Vanilla and uh, Bourbon Vanilla. So it sounds all very uh, intriguing. Also there were notes of Praline or Praline. Overall, very interesting. Combined with the great reviews, I really had to test it out. Um, I will spray here on my arm and immediately the first thing that struck me when I tried it, I was actually not impressed because there is a very strong alcohol scent coming off right away. And I was immediately put off. I um, thought that, okay, this is a cheapy. I can see why it was so cheap. And I kind of disregarded and uh, went on to use it really fast because um, I really wanted to finish the bottle <laughs> and was like, okay, I've tried this one and that's fine. I just use it up and move on. When this perfume really starts to kick in is after 10 to 15 to 20 minutes uh, when it starts to really warm up and the notes starts to come through and you start to notice the complexity and the depth that this perfume has because on an opening, as I said, really like alcohol and cheap vanilla, at least that's what my nose uh, detected, like this generic vanilla. And of course I didn't expect like super high-end, uh, you know, ingredients in this given the price, but because the reviews were so glowing and many people said also that uh, it smelled super close to one of the um, Galan exclusive uh, perfumes. So I was really expecting a lot and really put down at the beginning, uh, put off by the, the smell of the vanilla. But uh, I have to say that I am now really conflicted because it develops to be a really beautiful perfume, very warm and rich. And I found that on my scarf, uh, on the next day or a couple of days after I've sprayed it, I could smell this amazing smell. And I was like, what is this perfume? Because I can't really place it. And it's this. So this one uh, has surprised me. I would say that for the price, uh, I would say try it and you might love it because it's not a straight up uh, simple vanilla what I expected and um, I think it's definitely worth checking out. So this is Reminiscence Vanilla. Next up we have Serge Tan's Ombo Avani and I picked it up again blindly based on very good reviews and because I found a good sale. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so this is the 100ml bottle. Um, I've used very little of it just because I have so many perfumes and lately I've been getting many new ones to try and this has fallen a little bit back, but I think it's perfect for this weather. Uh, so basically on Boivigny, meaning uh, woody vanilla, uh, and it is classified as oriental vanilla. And I will read you the notes because they have quite interesting notes in, the, in this composition. So we have sandalwood, black licorice, coconut milk, beeswax, uh, bitter almond, vanilla, benzoin, gaia wood and tonka bean. This is according to Fragrantica. So many interesting notes. So the coconut, the beeswax, I was expecting something deep and like um, sweet, uh, rich and a bit waxy perhaps. But then there is coconut as well. So how does coconut and wood come together? I was really uh, intrigued. And this perfume is kind of really linear, so it doesn't change, at least on me. It continues to stay the same. I sense really sweet vanilla, so the vanilla is definitely sweet. Maybe it's because uh, it has the, the honey or the beeswax, I should say. And uh, yeah, the wood is kind of like smoky, so what I 
always say about this perfume is that it's kind of like taking vanilla uh, pods and throw them in the fire and the smoke, the sweet vanilla smoke that comes out of this is how this perfume smells to my nose and it is quite good in terms of projection and longevity so I can smell it from, from here and um, it stays for a very long time. What I have noticed that on my clothes the next day it continues to be present but it turns into much sweeter vanilla, uh, a bit like an ice cream vanilla, so the smoke is not there anymore. I don't sense any coconut in this perfume, so if you are thinking that maybe it would have some kind of a beachy vibe, a beachy vanilla, that's really not the case. Uh, it's very much uh, woody vanilla, a bit smoky, but not like cigarette smoke, kind of warmth of the fire. You can, you can tell that this is like a fireplace vanilla. So. Also very simple. If you are expecting like a lot of complexity, that was kind of my initial um, reaction because I was expecting something very deep and complex. You know, I don't know what to expect because I bought it blindly, but it's actually very transparent. It's transparent and sweet, but definitely present. So it doesn't evaporate very quickly. Uh, transparent, woody, fireplace, vanilla. This is Ombre by from one blind buy to the next, we have Galan Spiritus Double Vanille, and this one is something that I've heard raved about on YouTube so much. Um, it's been said to be this super cuddly, comforting vanilla for the autumn that is like just so boozy and rich and deep. And I knew that if I had get a chance and if I find it online, I will grab it and the chance presented itself. I bought it, I didn't know what to expect, but my expectations were really high, nevertheless. Um, so starting off with the high expectations, that's like the easiest way to get disappointed, I <laughs> found out. Mm, this one, why I'm saying that I'm disappointed, it is a beautiful scent and it's very tobacco-y to me, uh, very kind of green and, and vanilla. Mostly it's very warm vanilla with like very subtle hints of green tobacco in the background. Uh, so the notes, just to start off, pink pepper, bergamot, uh, incense, we have ylang ylang, cedar, Bulgarian rose, jasmine, benzoin and vanilla. And I can immediately sense the pink pepper on the top and the woodiness, um, but I'm not sensing like ylang ylang or, or much of a jasmine really. But for some reason, the mix of this is giving me kind of like a tobacco vibe, even though it's not a note, but just to my nose, perhaps something woody, something a little bit of hint of green. And it's really nice and very pleasant and very cuddly, just as I imagined. But the problem with this one for me is that um, it doesn't project very well and it stays really, really close to the skin. So it definitely lasts because I've noticed that uh, I could smell it on myself and on my clothes the next day, but it's really quiet. So for the price tag, I was kind of underwhelmed. And if I have to take this and put them, you know, next to each other, they don't smell the same, but because this one was compared to a different, uh, different, perfume from Galan from the same series as this one. I have not smelled it, so I can't confirm or deny. But this, after the nasty alcohol has passed, you know, that stage, this has lasted me and projected so much better and it's 10 times cheaper than this one. So this is again, uh, Reminiscence Vanilla. <sighs> so I don't know if I can recommend for the price that this one retails for to pick it up for like a good uh, comforting vanilla. It's beautiful scent, it's just very quiet. So I feel a bit conscious to say that this is worth the price. It is beautiful perfume, but you know, you, you do the math and if that makes sense to you, then great. Otherwise, beautiful, beautiful creation. Spiritus Double Vanille from Galan. Another blind buy. I think all of my perfumes are blind buy, <laughs> it turns out. So this one is Angel Schlesser and Oriental Soul. Uh, basically, this perfume uh, got me intrigued when I read about uh, some reviews on Fragrantica and the notes. Uh, and it is, I will spray over here. Yep, 
a little bit alcohol in the beginning, but uh, this perfume is very heavy on the vanilla uh, as an overall impression. It's classified as oriental vanilla and I will again go through the notes quickly. So we have citruses, peach, freesia, jasmine, heliotrope, vanilla, sandalwood, musk, benzoin and agarwood or oud. And I don't sense much of oud in this one, so it doesn't definitely have this like, um, you know, scrubby oudy that uh, maybe many people could find intimidating. This perfume is really uh, sweet, like a definitely benzoin and vanilla and a heliotrope, which I can sense giving this uh, powdery vibe of this perfume. So it's a little bit dusty. It's a little bit soft and powdery and really sweet. And I find that it lasts pretty well. So this one is also really good price. Online you could find them like for very uh, reasonable price. This is a hundred mil. It's made in Spain, it says. So this is a Spanish, I think it's a clothing brand and I just happened to have come across their perfumes and I really like them. Uh, so this one is definitely for the lovers of vanilla, perfect for the autumn weather. If you are into this uh, powdery vanilla vibe, uh, that's definitely a very good pick. And one that I don't see very often online, so Angel Schlesser Oriental Soul. So far I have tried to keep the vanilla perfumes very much in the vanilla family so there are not many other notes going on that give it a bit more floral profile or a bit more uh, fruity profile so they were really really focused on the vanilla. The next one is a little bit of a departure so this is Mancera Roses Vanille and I introduced it uh, because this one you can't really tell whether it's more roses or whether it's more vanilla. It's equally strong on both fronts. So this one is a little bit of a uh, atomic bomb of a perfume. So really, really strong, lasts very long. It's really beautiful, but you have to really love roses to be wearing this. And it's definitely super sweet. Uh, so notes in this one, we have lemon, rose and sugar. And then we also have sugar, cedar and white musk which is given a little bit more space uh, as the perfume progresses, so it doesn't uh, stay so cloying. Uh, this perfume is beautiful and I would recommend it to someone who definitely loves roses and wants to try a very strong vanilla, but doesn't want just vanilla. It like uh, maybe wants to have something that is a bit more on the uh, floral side. Uh, so this one is definitely a good pick for people who love vanilla, but don't want just like a flat vanilla. Perfect uh, staying power and perfect performance. You know, uh, every Mancera is quite strong. They are known for that. This one is no exception. And if you're on the market for Roses Vanilla Perfume, uh, we have Mancera Roses Vanilla. Now that we have ventured into the Roses and Vanilla territory, something that comes to mind when I think of those two things is rose scented Turkish delights and perfect for this uh, I have Kiko Micheri with Lokum Pudre and it's a dupe if you would like to say or perfume that smells really 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 similar is Montal Sweet Oriental Dream. I will spray uh, each of them on my wrist so let's start here we have uh, Kiko Micheri and on the other hand, I will spray Sweet Oriental Dream by Montal. On initial burst, I can say that Sweet Oriental Dream is more chemically and it goes directly into very nutty, sweet, deep uh, stage. While uh, the Kiko Micheri is slightly more rosy and it has a very subtle violet note that keeps it a bit lighter, but both of them are very realistic Turkish delight. So I would say if you are on the market for perfume that really mimics the scent, I was gonna say the taste, but like don't eat those. Uh, they really make me crave something sweet now that I have them on each arm. Kiko Micheri is a bit lighter 
Uh, it says uh, that this one, the version is the Pudra one. Um, it does have powder in it, definitely. Uh, and this one, the Montal, is kind of the exact same as this, but a little bit less rose and a little bit, uh, there is no violet note that I can detect. But very, very close and you definitely don't need both. So it's either one or the other. If you are a fan of Turkish Delight and like me, you've been on the market to try something, either of those will do the job. Very long lasting, good projection, absolutely satisfying this um, craving for Turkish Delight. So once again, Lukum Pudre by Kiko Mesheri or Montal Sweet Oriental Dream. I have to say that I hate both of those bottles, <laughs> so I can't even say which one from bottle perspective to recommend. I know that uh, Kiko Mesheri has done some uh, re repackaging and they have more sleek bottles now. This one can't even stand up, so it's like laying like this on the table. I'm really not a fan, but what's inside is that what counts and it's really, really beautiful. So both of these perfumes are perfect for the Turkish delight lovers out there. This was all from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up and I look forward to see you in my next one. Bye!